Good morning. Good morning. I'm Greg Sutherland, and your guest preacher this morning, why Pastor Brian is coming back from Israel with his wife. So, uh, what kind of a tree is this? A family tree, exactly. Now, some may call it a fruit tree. Uh, it's 13 of our 17 grandchildren, and uh, Raylene and I have been married for 41 years. So what that means is we have opportunities to babysit. <laughs> and uh, she's really good at it. I kind of, she tags me along. But when we go places uh, to, the, to the kids, I usually bring some kind of present to the, to the boys and she brings something to the girls. Well, I bring remote control stuff because that's what I like and they, they keep it and they fly it and they love it. So we're, we're sitting there in the living room and the 10 year old says, Grandpa, we make a great team. And I say, well, why is that? He says, because you have lots of money and I like lots of stuff. <laughs> Today's message is going to be on sacrificial living. <laughs> now, it's about denying self, not really denying stuff, unless stuff gets in the way of Jesus. So this, just a quick little thing to the, to the kids here. If your parents ask you, well, what do you want for Christmas? Say more of Jesus and maybe some stuff. But, you know, we do want more of Jesus. And uh, this is probably going to be the last one in the, Mer in the Mercy series. And if you remember, grace is God's favor on us. And we don't deserve it. But he's just so good to us. We serve a good God. And nothing he does is bad. It's all good. God is so good. And he shows us favor. And we are saved through Jesus Christ. By grace. By grace we are saved through faith in Jesus Christ. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. And his mercy is the fact that he doesn't punish us as we deserve. Because he extends grace to us. All of us are sinners. All of us fall short of the glory of God. But the great news is, through Christ, we've been forgiven. Not punished as we deserved, but actually blessed. There's a place in eternity for, for us, for everyone that takes Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That is nothing but good news. Now, today's... Um, message we're going to talk about, I want to really answer three questions for you. What is sacrificial living, number one? And what are the principles and examples of sacrificial living, number two? And why do we live sacrificially, number three? So in your bulletin, you will see, and on the slides, it, take your bulletin out, you can kind of follow things as we move through this. But what you'll see is red is written, you're gonna, those are the underline, so on the screen where you see red, it'll be uh, something you can fill a blank in with, so red is to write, and blue is for you. So blue you don't have to write down, it's just something you get to a little point of emphasis. <clears throat> the scripture passage comes from uh, Luke 9, 23, Jim Grant read that to you, but let's read that together. Then he said to them all, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross daily, and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. Whoever wants to lose their life will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and lose or forfeit their self? Good job. Now, in this section, particularly from 23, we're going to look at whoever wants to be my disciple um, must deny themselves, take up the cross uh, daily and follow me. Just before this, just before this, and uh, a couple verses before, Jesus for the first time reveals to his disciples that he is going to be, he's going to, he's going to go before the um, religious rulers, they are not going to be nice to him. 
that he's going to eventually die. He's going to suffer, be denied, and eventually die and raise and be raised on the third day. Now, he tells them that. And guess what? If your master is going to suffer, what are you going to do? You're going to go through it too. So he's going to be really clear with them. And um, that's what's coming up. Now, can you see on this slide across, <clears throat> that little white thing way in the distance? <clears throat> well, there's a lot of people that like to walk to this cross. I'm not one of them, but there's a lot of people like what my wife does, and, she, and, and we go out there, it's where we vacation, she likes to walk to the cross, a lot of people like to walk to the cross. On occasion, I'd rather golf, but on occasion, I'll walk to the cross. <clears throat> when I walk to the cross, I find out uh, it's all uphill. When you carry the cross, it's all uphill. Almost everything I've ever done and tried to accomplish that was worthwhile was uphill. It's not easy. Anybody that says it easy is lying to you, but it's worth it. This right now is a teardrop in the ocean of eternity. What we experience now is nothing compared to the glory that God has for us. What's sacrificial living? <clears throat> well, three points. Surrender to Christ, sacrifice for Christ, and submission to Christ. It's all about Jesus. He's the centerpiece of civilization. Always has, always will be. Let's take a look at what it does. <clears throat> then he said to them all, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. So the first aspect is surrender. And surrender is you raise the red flag. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, surrender is, it's in red, but you raise the white flag. <laughs> You're like, uh, I got too much red on today. <laughs> so let's take a look at that. <clears throat> in a surrender, no one wants really surrender. They want victory. But victory comes from surrender. Victory comes in Jesus. Victory doesn't come by elevating yourself. It comes by elevating Jesus. Surrender is to, to deny oneself and to live for Christ. Now, is it possible to serve two masters? No, we know it's not. You can't serve God and money. You can't serve yourself and God. So surrender is to really die to my plans so I can live for God's plans. Do they always have to conflict? No, but when they do conflict, we live for the Lord's plans. What that means is when you're pursuing whatever you're pursuing, you say, Lord, is this what you want me to do? If it's not, will you block it? And if, if it is, is it consistent with Scripture? Is, are the circumstances such that I can do it? Do you have the peace of the Holy Spirit? Have you asked your friends in your life group to pray, pray for you? And you might say, well, Greg, I'm not in a life group. Well, what do you think? Probably be a good thing to do. A real good thing to do. Because then you got a group of people a small group of people who can pray for you. If you don't know what a life group is, come up and talk to Al or I or any of the elders, and we'll, we'll help you get into one. <clears throat> so Jesus never sells discipleship. Um, but I'm selling life groups. But he doesn't sell discipleship. He, he doesn't. He, he, surrender is not popular. Deny self is to surrender to Jesus. And when we surrender, the Holy Spirit really transforms us and you actually want to pick up the cross. You want, you have a changed life. God's grace is free and it changes your life. Changes your life. <clears throat> a merciful life is one surrendered to Jesus. Think about that. You say, your way, Lord, not mine. Your way, Lord, not mine. Because God is all about transforming 
transforming and redeeming people. Think about it. You remember Saul? Saul was Saul of Tarsus was the one who was on the road to Damascus. He was on his way to imprison the Christians because he hated Christians. And God met him. Boom. Knocked him off his high horse. And guess what? He became the greatest missionary for Christ the world has ever known. From a hater to a lover. Only God can do that. Only God can do that. He can do it with you if he hasn't. Have you surrendered your life to Jesus Christ? That's the big one. And if you haven't, will you? Say, Lord, I want you first in my life. I've been trying to run my life for a long time. Not doing me any good. I want you now. Please help me. I believe you died for my sins. You've forgiven them. And Lord God, I want you first in my life. Sacrifice is the cost to take up my cross daily. <clears throat> the cross was all about killing in Roman times, and Matt did an excellent job last week about describing what a tax collector was and, a, and the, the death of the cross. Sacrifice is about to take my cross up daily. Your cross is not your job. It's not your boss, and it's not your spouse. It may feel like that, but it's not. It's your choice. Your job, your boss, your spouse, uh, those are your choices. Those, those are not, that's not your cross. Your cross is the cost to be a disciple. Now, what do I mean by cost? It costs something to deny yourself. The cross is giving up of your time, your energy, and your finances. For one thing, and another, it's a giving up to some amount of security, comfort, and convenience. You remember this morning we had the compassion group and group of people going across. They're going to support it with finances. I'm sure we're going to send people from our congregation there. It's going to cost time, energy, resources. It's going to take people that are going to go there. It's not comfortable to go into a different country. It's not comfortable to go through security in the airport anymore. <clears throat> and yet, those are things you're going to do for the cause of Christ. That's your cross. The cost. Submission is to obey Christ's commands and teachings. You have to know them to obey them. So John 14, 15, if you love me, you will obey what I command. <clears throat> now, as Christians, what are we to be known for? Our theology? Maybe a little bit. Bible teaching? Doesn't hurt. You need to know God's word. But really, we're to be known by our love. And think about that. If somebody were to mention your name to somebody else, would they say, you know, that person really loves people. Do you want to be known by that? If you do, that should be a prayer. Lord, I want to be known as a person who loves other people, not criticizes and condemns them. <clears throat> so I want to give you three principles of, um, of living a life of mercy. Number one, show mercy by looking for people in need and help them. Uh, if you care, you're really aware. It's so easy to just have tunnel vision. you got to go from point A to point B, and you're just so focused on getting the job done, you miss everything around you. You miss it. If it too busy is the enemy of mercy. Now, I know I was too busy for many years. But when you give people your time, you're really giving them your life. You understand that? You can make more money, you can buy more presents, but you can't make any more time. Your time is your life. When you give them time, you give them attention. <clears throat> you love God by loving the people God made. 
You love God by loving the people God made. Philippians says, um, uh, look out for the needs of others, not just your own. And Galatians says, carry each other's burdens, and in this you will fulfill the law of Christ. I think our Savior does a great job. <clears throat> and uh, faith in action, they go to people's homes, they do whatever folks need that they can't do themselves. They have a backpack ministry of filling that for kids that don't have food on the weekend. Uh, students, um, they have a car ministry for single moms. They, they fix their car so they can go to work and take care of their kids. And, and lately, the, the stormtrooper ministry, you know which one that is? When the big storm moved in that didn't move in? <laughs> Well, Pastor Brian, I mean, that guy is amazing, isn't he? Do you know how blessed we are as a congregation to have him? I hope. Yeah. Yeah. See, this is a time of Thanksgiving, and he paid me extra for that. No, no he didn't. You, you know that. You know that. I don't get paid at all. This is a gift. So, <laughs> so but I hope, I hope you write him a note. Thank you. Thank you for all you do for the kingdom of God. I call it stormtroopers. He had his offices packed with stuff, teams set up, 15 teams to go out, not to stay home and be safe, but to go out and help. It's a mission of ministry. So number two, show mercy by not being offended or persuaded by another's sin. You don't have to. To, first Peter says, above all, love each other deeply because love covers the multitudes of sins. Um, <clears throat> I, I've heard people say, well, gee, I don't want to associate with that person and become polluted by what they do. Well, you don't have to be polluted by what they do. The one thing that believers and unbelievers have in common is a sin nature. We all have sin natures. They sin, we sin. But in Christ, we're forgiven. They of all Unbelievers, you, you want to, who's your unbelieving friend? You should have at least one unbelieving friend. At least one. Praying for them, being their friend. How are they going to get to know Jesus other than through somebody that's a believer? Bring them to church with you. Jesus Christ accepts all people, but he does not approve of everything they do. He accepts all, but he doesn't approve. You don't have, just like Jesus, you, you, don't, you, can, you accept the person. You don't have to approve of everything they do. My goodness. Jesus didn't do that either. Matthew, he was Levi. He was a tax collector. Matt nailed it last week. That guy was bad dude. And Jesus looked past that and he said, follow me. And he gave him a new name. And he used the skills and ability he had of being a tax collector to write the book of Matthew. Detailed, incredible, changed life. And you know the rest of the guys, like the fishermen, Peter and, and John and James, well, they left. They, but at the end, they kind of went back to fishing while they didn't know what Jesus was up to. But Matthew, Romans would never take him back as a tax collector. He walked away from it. He's done. He burned his bridge. And he committed. And he committed. And we know, not Levi, the tax collector, we know Matthew, the apostle. <clears throat> Number three, show mercy by not expecting unbelievers to act like believers until they are. Sometimes you get frustrated with your friends that are unbelievers. They're going, how could they possibly do that? Think back how you were before you were one. <laughs> and we're also to practice hospitality. <laughs> and, and Jesus said, I was a stranger, and you invited me in. Um, <clears throat> I recently heard a testimony by a guy named Rob. He was a construction worker. And he worked with his boss named Mitch. In, in uh, Rob's in his 20s, he was an alcoholic, a drug addicted, and he'd actually attempted suicide. Uh, he met a friend that led him to Jesus Christ. He turned his life over to the Lord, 
And he was so excited and so fired up. He kept a Bible on the dashboard of his pickup truck. And at lunchtime, he'd, he'd eat his lunch, he'd read his Bible, and he would try to get Mitch in. And, and Mitch just was not interested. Not interested at all. Called him all kinds of names. None of them you'd want to hear here. But one day, Mitch came to work, and, and uh, Rob goes, what's up? And he goes, oh, geez, my wife just left me, left me and the kid. So he said, well, um, tell me about it. So they began to talk. And in the end, he said, can I pray for you? <clears throat> When's the last time you asked if you could pray for somebody? With them. And he said, yeah. Yeah. So he did. He prayed with them, and things began to change. Over the course of time, Mitch became more and more open to the gospel, and it was about Thanksgiving time. What do we have next week? <clears throat> and he said, would you like, would you and your son like to come to dinner at our house? Not real comfortable. And they actually showed up. They showed up for dinner. He was hospitable, extending mercy, living a life of mercy. And guess what? Two weeks later, in the pickup truck that Mitch owned, that Rob owned, Mitch, what do you think happened? He came to Jesus. He committed his life. He surrendered his life to Jesus. Now they're friends for eternity. And all he did was extend mercy. It wasn't over the top anything. It was, you know... Sometimes we think, well, we have to be the prosecutor. We have to be the defense attorney. We somehow have to be the judge for Jesus. He doesn't want any of that. He just wants you to be a witness for him. That's called your testimony. You are the expert of your own life. What God has done in your life, no one else knows unless you tell him your story. There is power in your story. Tell your story. Tell your story. And if you hear someone whisper, that's not, don't do that. That is not God. God wants your story out. The whole Bible is filled with stories. <clears throat> What's sacrificial living? Blue is for you. It's to love God. It's to, to surrender, to deny self, to sacrifice, the cost of the cross, and three, to submit, to obey the commands. What are the principles? We're doing a summary here. The principles are to love people. You show you love God by loving people. Be aware, it shows you care. People need your help. And little things make a big difference. The little things. Sin can be very offensive, but try not to be offended nor persuaded by it. Unbelievers don't act like believers. They can't until they have the Holy Spirit in them. They can't. So why live sacrificially? To live like Jesus. Luke said, uh, Jesus said, and Luke recorded it, Luke the physician, anyone who does not carry his cross and follow me can't be my disciple. There's a price to pay. But it's a good one. So we are to love God, love people, live like Jesus. And to live sacrificially is really to live like Jesus. So, <clears throat> I don't know about you, but I am glad the cross is empty. And I'm glad the tomb is empty. Because that means we, see, we serve a risen Savior who sits right next to the Father and prays for us. Because I need it, and I think we all do. Let me pray for us now. <clears throat> Father, as we come to you, we thank you for this morning. Thank you that you call us to deny ourselves and live for you, to carry our cross, to, to, to know we just can't sit there, but be committed to who you are, and to know your word and to obey it. And thank you for the privilege of being a child of God through your son, Jesus Christ. And it's in his name we pray. Amen.